Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 5 Legends mod series here on the channel. Just a few episodes remain. We are headed to Homestead, Miami here today with a 24 point advantage over Kevin Harvick, or sorry, not Kevin Harvick, over Dale Earnhardt, who's currently the first driver out. Uh, he needs 17 points to get himself in over Kevin Harvick. Larson, Petty, Legano all on the outside looking in as well. Nobody locked in at the final four currently and we are headed into uh, uh, my favorite mile and a half circuit on the schedule homestead miami here for the dixie vodka 400 very excited for this one as you could imagine we're running jeff gordon's 2012 dupont 20 years paint scheme that he ran at homestead miami and actually won with this paint scheme so hopefully we can replicate that exact thing by winning here today uh but obviously he ran this scheme and then they switched to exalta which is still like dupont but it was like a, a, what do you even call exalt? It's like a sub a sub genre uh, of Dupont, but nonetheless, we get our qualifying attempt underway here from Miami. The goal uh, or the pole time, sorry, was a 31.795. I'm just now realizing eight episodes in, it tells you the pole time on the top right instead of a goal time in season mode. But we come through three and four, running that inside. You're gonna see me up on the top a lot in the race, but definitely on the bottom here in qualifying out of turn four down the front straightaway it's not going to be pull it's a little bit off 32.128 that puts us in eighth place here for the dixie vodka 400 overall pretty decent qualifying effort i was pretty happy with that you see the rest of our uh, competition around us and some of those playoff contenders that you want to look for like adele senior in 27th place so kyle larson uh, as well you see uh, running up the top 10 though brand kozlowski uh, but up ahead tony stewart and kyle larson too playoff contenders right there with very solid qualifying efforts larson p1 dale jarrett p2 there you see right off the bat trevor bain posting some fast times in practice but we got two drivers set to the back dale jr for failing optical scanning station multiple times and greg biffle failed at technical inspection Beth biffle uh, had a top 10 qualifying effort here as we are ready to bring this 2012 dupont send off paint scheme potentially to victory lane once again green flag is out from now p7 moving up that one spot from biffle's uh, misfortune we're on the way for 67 laps here around this homestead miami circuit such a fun track to drive and i say it every time i come here for i don't know how many years now but it's criminal that nascar got rid of this as the championship finale uh, and chose phoenix over this a little bit looser on the exit of turn two down this back straight away three wide with our teammate of jimmy johnson as well up on the outside there kurt bush but we are going to get clear of the 48 and the 97 into turn three so from p7 to p4 already here in miami lap one of 19 in this first and opening stage so we got plenty of time to move our way forward but one lap down and you can see up ahead it's Larson it's uh, Tony Stewart as well as Dale Jarrett you look behind us in the mirror you already see a big gap that means someone is certainly off the pace early on here they were good in qualifying but they're not good in race trim that's for sure but as you continue to watch us uh, close in on this next group of cars Dale Jarrett Tony Stewart Kyle Larson they're all stuck together and here I am now starting to just roll the outside here as we exit turn two lap four trying to use my opportunity with that momentum to do this right here go three wide to the outside of Stewart and Jarrett down into turn three and here we go gaining more time now as Larson Careful, continues to lead the race but he would stay clear for the time being I'm trying to get of course get to his outside we get clear of the 88 finally still got Stewart up or inside but great racing uh, in these opening few laps so far in Miami now already closing in on lap six you see Stewart going side by side with that number five down this back straight away I'm actually going to try and help Larson give him a bit of a push which will not only help him but it will help myself as well down into turn three but maybe it won't help Kyle Larson like I thought it was going to he's going to go sideways he saves it thank goodness uh, but the damage is done to the number five he loses some track position and that would uh, really uh, separate everybody he would fall down to fifth Kyle Bush up to fourth I'm still holding on uh, in third place as Stewart and Jarrett continue to run up there in front of us can see though uh, as we were coming up on the halfway point of stage one that uh, we were starting to struggle a little bit just couldn't quite keep up with Jarrett and Stewart but then uh, things would kind of start to switch around a little bit as they often do on long runs here in NASCAR Heat 5. Things were now starting to go a little bit in my favor and I was slowly reeling in this number 88 of Dale Jarrett. Kyle Bush was hanging with me but he wasn't really getting any closer. Tony Stewart had a massive lead at this point and I like I said just closing in slowly but surely on Jarrett and now I was starting to pull away from Kyle Busch as well. 
but we just simply don't really have enough time, I don't think, at the rate that we're catching the 88 to actually get to him and pass him. And, and sure enough, we come through to the final lap here in Homestead, Miami, in stage one. The fuel light comes on, but it was green from start to finish. Stewart nearly lapping people here in stage one, but we go down into three and four for the final time. Jared to the inside, myself all the way up on the top, getting close to that outside wall here. A flawless stage one, really. We never hit anything, so that was fantastic, but out of turn four. Uh, actually, I clipped the outside wall just a tad bit, but we I'm crossed the line. It's P3 here in stage one. Tony Stewart uh, looking very very, very good, looking promising to make it into the final four, uh, but obviously still has to get through the rest of this race and, and get through Martinsville as well, but myself, Kyle Larson up here in the top ten. Dale Earnhardt Sr. as well, uh, actually with a stage point, he is in need of a very strong day if he wants to get himself into any opportunity to get into that final four. He actually fell outside of the top 10 post stage one pit stops. However, we're P3 for the restart. Stewart, Jarrett, your front row, and we are back underway here in stage two from Homestead, Miami. This time we got two less laps in the stage, 17 instead of 19, down into turn one, right to the back of the 20 immediately, hoping I can get clear of that eight. 88 of Del Jared. That would be very helpful and allow me to just kind of settle in in P2 and focus on that number 20 Home Depot Toyota Camry and hopefully rip the top and, and try to find a way around him. But here we go side by side into turn three. Can we clear that 88 or not? I don't think we will because you see Jared's holding on pretty tough on the outside. We're trying to slide up on the exit of the corner and well, sure enough, we are going to be able to take second place away from that 88 of Del Jarrett who's now going to be in a scrap with Larson as well as Kyle Busch. But I actually instead of running the top, uh, go down to the inside here. So you can kind of make the bottom work. I can make it work pretty comfortably uh, for a few laps, and then I, I seem to have to migrate up to the outside. So it didn't take long. Lap 5, I was up to the top here, as you can see me trying my best to just stay with Stewart, trying to maybe find a little bit of momentum on him and, and catch him off guard, but he just had so much speed in that number 20 car. We come to lap 7, approaching lap 8, in the same situation. Right, He's just slowly, slowly pulling away, and Carl Edwards is slowly running me down. Uh, for second place. So that 99 has found some pace here. Slightly getting into the outside wall. Not a big deal, but lap 10. Stewart now to the top. Myself up high. Carl Edwards up high. I'm a little too high here in Homestead, Miami. We're into the outside wall pretty good that time. That's the first time we've really got the wall. Edwards the second. It's about to be a Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart Homestead, Miami duel again like we saw uh, over 10 years ago in 2011 of course when they fought for the championship in a tiebreaker, which was absolutely insanity. But you can see now we are surrounded by uh, these other drivers uh, down here about P5, 6, 7th, and 8th with Elliot, Bill Elliot, that is, Dale Jarrett, Kyle Bush, all these guys. And I actually surprisingly struggled to really do anything around this area. Usually you would have expected based off stage one, I would have been able to move my way forward and get past this group of cars. However, that was not really the case, unfortunately. So you see Jarrett and Elliot now driving away from me as Kyle Bush is up my inside on the exit of turn two. So just really doing whatever I can here, trying to bide my time. You see that Bush got clear of me. We were down to now P7 as we were battling with Greg Biffle for that sixth spot, we, but we got back ahead of him and we would really just continue to battle with him. We know that 16 is fast because he qualified in the top 10. He got sent to the back uh, for inspection issues and now he's back into the top 10 and it only took him a stage and a half really to get there. But you can see we continue to have pretty even speed with these drivers around us. Stewart still leads over Carl Edwards who's trying to run him down and now as we are approach just two laps to go in the stage. You see up front, Stewart to the outside, Edwards to the bottom. Edwards getting closer lap by lap to that number 20. So there's a shot he could maybe get the stage win here. But now two laps to go officially in the stage around the outside of the 88 of Dale Jarrett who actually pulls a tire into turn one just moments after I clear him. Thank goodness because we would have gotten taken out. Surprisingly, no caution comes out. So the green flag remains on the circuit and it's been green from start to finish aside from the stage break between stage one and two uh, and here we are trying to follow Kyle Busch through one and out of turn two down the back straightaway for the final time and I don't quite have enough for him so we're just going to accept a P5 result here really in stage two so you see up ahead uh, Stewart on the outside and Edwards follows him I'm actually going to clip the outside wall again pretty good but it's not going to hurt our position thankfully Tony Stewart
Tour win stage two. He swept the first two stages. Carl Edwards follows him. We cross the line P5 here in the stage. So, uh, you know, we didn't quite have the same pace uh, that we had in stage one, but overall, I'm pretty happy with what we did show uh, because this car is feeling pretty good still. So we're going to come in and make a couple of uh, visual repairs to the car as well as put four fresh tires on it and fill it up with feel. And we did give up one position, but I wasn't too disappointed with that because we're on the outside here and I don't mind being on the outside in Miami so we're back underway it's 25 laps of racing here uh, to sort out this of course finishing order and in 25 laps of potentially green flag racing it's been green from start to finish things are looking very very good here and promising for a green flag run to the end of this race which means as well green flag pit stops are going to be on the way possibly now so I'm going to get to the back of that 94 of Bill Elliott give him a shove here down this back straight away to the outside of the 16 of Biffle down into turn 3 immediately jumping up to that third groove. Nobody else is willing to do it except behind me. I do see Kyle Larson up there and Sharker there to see Larson running the top, but out of four, not going to quite be enough to build up momentum. It really does seem like the outside takes a few laps to really kind of uh, kick in here in Homestead, Miami, because the inside is really OP at the beginning of a run. And when I say beginning, I'm only talking three, four, or five laps tops before uh, you can really get this outside working. But you can see myself, though, just committed to try and get it working early on instead of falling everybody on the inside so we now come through to lap 45 approaching 46 and we're still in a battle here with Bill Elliott in that number 94 we're getting clear of him to the outside of Greg before back into the top five Tony Stewart's not driving away like he has been in stage one and two so it seems like they have made the wrong adjustments on that car and he seems to be falling off because Kyle Busch is all over the back of uh, Tony Stewart now Carl Edwards in third myself battling it out for P4 Bush on the inside there trying to make something happen but you can see in lap 48 Stewart continues to run uh, higher up the track as Bush continues to run the bottom and now we're in a battle with Edwards and, and Elliot and them but Elliot would move his way forward and get past Tony Stewart for the lead as I clip the outside wall actually so uh, another mistake right there we are starting to make some errors here in Miami however I decided to make a pit stop strategy call let's say so it's been green flag racing all race long. We cannot make it to the end of this race. So we come through to now lap 55 and I decided, you know what? Let's pit. We have eight laps of field. So we're not going to see anybody coming into the pit lane for six, seven laps still. But I decided let's get the advantage now and see if we can maybe come out the leader when this cycle is through because I'm very confident uh, green flag is going to stay out and there's not going to be really any issue there. We also have a very nice points buffer that if a caution for whatever reason does come out, it's really not going to be the end of the world but very simple uh two tires on the right side and about half a can of feel is basically all we need to get to the end of this race here i think it was actually sorry it might have been one can of feel i can't remember uh but nonetheless we get back rolling here through one and two so we're p38 currently uh two cars out of the race at this point 39th and 40th but everything was was pointing to it staying green here in homestead miami so i was just kind of trying to get up to gear and, and settle in here and, and put down some quick laps before everybody comes into the pit lane uh but it doesn't matter because the caution has come out of course it did so we are the lucky dog. That's one of the positives here. But uh, at the same time, we have to start from the back of the pack. So absolutely beautiful scenes here in Homestead, Miami. But we're back on the lead lap. But now we're P37. Eight laps to go. Coming to seven laps to go once we cross the line. Jimmy Johnson, Jamie McMurray right here in front of us. Obviously, now we got to get the elbows out because, like I said, we do have a nice points buffer coming into this race, but that doesn't really change the fact that we can't afford to give up, say, right now we would be looking at giving up like 30 points, so we don't want to be doing that here, so I'm going to get going as quick as I can. Three wide here with Play Steve Park down into turn three, but you can see the speed we have. Now, I did pit, by the way, so Play with the lucky dog, I came in and I put four fresh tires on the car uh, and I believe everybody else around us only has two because that seems to be the kind of logic the AI take at a moment like this in the race so and I'm pretty confident I was correct on that because you can see as I'm going down into turn one I'm blowing the doors off of these guys I mean at this point they're just they're letting me cook <laughs> at this point here now as I go out of turn two I'm absolutely flying uh, P26 25th 24th 23rd oh way right to the back of Jeff Burton there I was hoping I was gonna have enough space didn't quite have enough but we would get navigate around him anyways and here we are to the inside of Richard Petty, three wide in the middle with him, and Kenseth got into the back of Kozlowski there trying to slice to the inside, didn't really cause much issue. Another car in the pit lane with an engine failure. Three wide to the outside, passing Hamlin as well. Here's Dale Earnhardt Sr., here's
it's Rusty Wallace. We're passing everybody. And I was like, wow, if we could get one more caution, we might actually have a shot to win this race because uh, we have fresher tires than anybody. We're absolutely flying. Carl Edwards is currently leading the race right now as I'm going to actually get into the outside wall in one and two, but only a few laps remain at this point. A top 10 is going to be a very easy task to accomplish here, and we're going to do it right here, actually. Passing Kane, Logano, Waltrip into ninth place we go, and we will get past Yarborough, get to the outside of uh, Mark Martin as well, and what could have been all of a sudden if we could just get one more yellow? I mean, never say never. We could still get a caution here. We have another two laps, but we are here you see me out of turn four approaching the two to go. We're going to as well pass Kyle Larson on the outside. So that's P6 here in Miami. Can we get to fifth? That's going to be the question. Biffle is a ways ahead, but we have such an advantage on the tires, but it didn't look like it was going to happen. No yellow. White flag in the air for Greg Biffle down this straightaway is P5. He is Carl Edwards leading the way by now a good chunk uh, as you can see, uh, several car lengths, he is in front of the cars behind him of Bill Elliott, Tony Stewart, Kyle Busch, and then uh, myself trying to chase down Greg Biffle on this final lap, but it's not going to be enough here. Half a lap remains in Homestead, Miami. Carl Edwards is always so strong, it felt like here at times in Homestead, Miami, and here he is coming through out of turn four. He is going to win in Homestead, Miami. We're not going to do this paint scheme justice like you had in 2012, but we are still going to get a respectable sixth place result out of this race in Homestead. Cannot complain too much about a solid effort like that. And an effort that is, well, quite simply, only going to help us in the point standings. We had points in Stage 1 and Stage 2 and a Top 10 overall. So that will do nothing but benefit us going into Martinsville and, and probably put us pretty comfortable going into Martinsville. And let's take a look at that playoff grid before we end this episode to see, you know, an idea of what it actually looks like. But 125 laps at Martinsville under the lights, I believe, in the next one. But we are third. 33 points to the good, so the odds of us getting eliminated are pretty low. Tony Stewart is relatively w locked in. Kyle Busch is looking good as well, and you see the bottom four that have work to do. Larson, Dale Earnhardt Sr., Legano, and Richard Petty. That does it for me. If you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. I'd like to thank you all for taking your time and your day for watching, and I'll see you guys in the Martinsville Eliminator. Have a great day, everybody.